You're not a China analyst, but China is one of the world's biggest buyers of oil. Of course. If if this trade war continues, if Hong Kong continues, I could see a situation where demand for oil into China decreases, which means global oversupplies increase. And that's a bearish scenario for oil. Of course. I mean, China was the engine for growth for all commodities. And so what we've seen is with the trade war restarting, I mean, commodities have been especially hit by this. In terms of oil demand, I mean, you're right. The Chinese were stockpiling aggressively in the first half of the year. They understood what was coming in terms of Venezuela, in terms of Iran sanctions. They were big buyers of crude from those countries. They now have inventories that they can draw down from and slow their purchases. I mean, Chinese oil demand was a real pillar of holding the oil market up for the first half of this year. If that goes away, oil prices are really going to struggle, putting a lot of pressure on countries like Saudi Arabia in terms of yeah. what you do in terms of response. 2008, we had the last big demand-driven price collapse. Remember oil was at 147, mm -hmm. crashed into the 30s? OPEC essentially pulled 4 million barrels off the market over 12 months. What does OPEC do now with a softening demand picture? What, you answer your own question. Well, my, I always say that. I always get myself into trouble on this show. What, what well, does OPEC do with a softening demand picture? The Saudis have already come out last week and said, look, we're going to take 700,000 additional barrels off the market. That's going to be the difference between our August and September daily numbers. But the question is, do they have to do more? And can you get the rest to do more? And unlike 2008, now you have to deal with Russia. They have a co-pilot that has been reluctant to cut as aggressively as Saudi Arabia. This is the problem with Russia. We know the U.S. is at 12.3, 12.5 million a day. We know where OPEC is for the most part. Russia's like this great mystery. How well, much do you think Russia is actually producing? Well, actually, the OPEC members all say that the Russians never overpromise and underdeliver. They just tell you they're not going to cut as much. And the difference is the Russian energy sector is dominated by corporates, not a single national oil company. And you have, you know, the head of Rofsnet. He's never liked the OPEC agreement. So it's harder to corral the CEOs. I mean, Vladimir Putin has to lay down the law and say, you will cut this much. But they haven't basically done what the Saudis have done. And the question is, if they need a bigger cumulative cut, but how much more can you get the Russians to do? Samir Madani of Tanker Trackers, oh, he's, done some great. he's done some great work on just how, you know, sort of Iranian oil sitting out there in these oh, ghost ships, yeah. most of them bought by the Bank of Kunlun in China. Yes. How much oil do you believe China really has stockpiled that's sitting out there? That well, they, how long can they go? Well, this is the, I mean, that oil, though, is in bonded storage. It has not actually come into China. The question really will be, if we start to see the Chinese trying to move more of those barrels into the country properly, does the U.S. start to sanction more aggressively Chinese refineries, well, that's it. Chinese and, 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 and corporates, that's... banks? I mean, I think this is where I don't actually think the Chinese are going to pull that trigger soon because that does potentially bring on a very, very tough U.S. response. It's one thing to do ship-to-ship -ship transfers. It's another thing to essentially say, we're going to blow the whole sanctions regime up. And that's, this is why we talk about it. And this is, I think you're, you're as always, hitting <laughs> on the key thing. We've got this trade war going on. We've got this tit-for-tat in tariffs, and it's a big deal. Right. No one's minimizing that. But, you know, President Xi in China and President Trump here, you know, they have warm words for each other, at least publicly, right. which is good. If we saw the open purchase of oil, to your point, on the market, what I mean, the U.S. government has two choices. Ignore its own sanctions no. or take tougher action, neither of which seems like a good outcome. No, but I guess they would have to take tougher action because they have to show their backing words with but anger. that steps up the trade war it yet totally another. And again, now you're not shoving the kid in the playground. Someone threw a punch. Right, you threw him off the slide. So the question really is, will the Chinese do that? Again, I think they're more likely to do the ship-to-ship -ship transfers, keep it more clandestine than to essentially say, we're going to totally blow up your sanctions regime. Bring it on.